AI Weekly Breakthroughs. Welcome to another episode. It's a show where we explore all the key happenings from the AI world over the past week, over the past seven days to see what really matters, to see what will impact the future. And this week, we again have a lot of very interesting and impressive announcements, mostly because of Apple's WWDC 2024. So it's Apple's annual worldwide developer conference. And as usual, they kicked it off with a few hours of announcements. What I want to do here is share the main one. So a lot of different features, a lot of new capabilities coming across their devices. I want to focus on the key ones. And this edition of WWDC was especially highly anticipated because Apple, they've been relatively quiet about their generative AI plans, and they promise they're going to talk more about it here, and they deliver on that promise. So let's look at some of the key ones. And first one, without a doubt, Apple intelligence. What is it? AI for the rest of us. This is how Apple calls it. It's personal intelligence built into Macs, iPads, and iPhones, so across their devices. And before I explore how this is different to what let's say OpenAI is doing with ChatGPT, what Google is doing with Gemini Malls. Let's look at some of the capabilities that Apple Intelligence brings. Number one, writing tools, helping you write better text, articles, emails, for instance, right? Proofreading, summarizing text, extracting key points from text. Number two, image generation, playground and gen emojis. You can now generate new creative emojis. And then three, updates for Siri. A lot of updates coming to Apple's assistant. Siri, number one, it's now supercharged with Apple, Apple intelligence. Number two, better natural language understanding. So this is generative AI capabilities coming to Siri. You will now be able to give out more complex instructions, or perhaps you will stutter and Siri will still be able to understand you. And you will be able to write to Siri as well. And then third, and this is very important, this is where Apple is different, personal context. So let's say OpenAI, ChatGPT, Google Gemini malls trained on vast amounts of data. They are really good at understanding world knowledge. What they're not that good at doing is understanding you, understanding your background, understanding the context of you, tasks that you are performing day to day. This is what Apple is focused on. This is what Apple is trying to solve so that AI will really be custom, custom built for you and it will be able to assist you better because of it. What does this really mean in practice? Apple shared an interesting example of a task that Siri will now be able to accomplish. I can now ask it, when is my mother landing tomorrow, right? And Siri will be able to access this information. It will know who is your mother and it will be able to extract the information about her flight arrival time. And you'll be then able to continue the conversation and ask, what dinner plans have we made for that evening? And again, having access to this information in this case, text messages, it will be able to extract that information. You booked a dinner reservation at 7 p.m. in an Italian restaurant, for instance. So this is what personal context means. Obviously, price, privacy is a big consideration here, but Apple says they have it covered and more about that in a minute. Second big announcement, Apple partners with OpenAI. A lot of the intelligence in Apple intelligence is actually coming from OpenAI. So Apple is integrating ChatGPT into experiences within iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. So again, across their devices, across their ecosystem. Siri can access and use ChatGPT when necessary, when ChatGPT can provide value. And before that happens, Siri will ask you, is this something you actually want to do? Send this information, let's say an image for processing to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is also available in the system-wide writing tools, which I already mentioned, and then lastly, privacy. So extra focus on privacy protection. Requests are not stored by OpenAI, IP addresses are obscured, and users can connect their own ChatGPT, own ChatGPT accounts to these features. And logical next question, is Apple giving up on the idea of developing training their own generative AI models? Not quite. They also released or announced two different models or two groups of models. So on-device models and then server foundation models. So 
on device models, smaller language models. So Apple is continuing this trend of building highly capable, but small language models, which can run on edge devices. So this is a 3 billion parameter model in, 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 in this instance. And then second, larger server-based model. This is more similar to, let's say, what OpenAI is doing and what the Gemini models are from Google. And another focus of, of Apple, with these models is that they are really tailored to tasks that users of their devices are doing day to day. So one of one such task is for instance, summarization. So here is comparison between Apple's model to Microsoft's Phi 3 mini model. So Microsoft Phi models, Phi family of small language models. And we see that Apple's models that perform better on this particular benchmark eva evaluating summarization. Second comparison is the versus comparison. So comparing users saw responses from two different models and then chose which one they prefer better. And we see on the left, small language model comparison to Gemma 2B, Mr. 7B, Phi 3 Mini, and then Gemma 7B. And we see that in all of those comparisons, Apple's on-device model was better or its answers, answers were preferred to the answers of other models. And then the bigger model, Apple Server, compared to DBRX Instruct, compared to GBT 3.5 Turbo, compared to Mistral's mixture of experts model 8 times 22 b and then lastly GBT 4 Turbo. And in the first three comparisons, Apple's model came out on top, but that was not the case in comparison versus GBT for Turbo. So this is this is interesting to see from, from Apple, or this is nice to see from Apple. They're keeping it transparent, even though their model did not win. They still share this benchmark or they still share this evaluation. But then last comparison where Apple's models do come out on top is evaluation of output harmfulness. So this is another key focus for Apple, making sure that responses from those models are not harmful. And we see this comparison, this evaluation, looked at the violation rate. So how frequently or how likely are their models to generate potentially harmful responses? And we see that in that regard, Apple's models outperform other models by quite a bit, actually. So this is nice to see from Apple. Now, as already mentioned, this event is still going on. I think we can expect more announcements coming from Apple. What's also going to be very interesting to see is some of these features are now going to be tested by users in the next weeks, in the next months, and that will really be the test to see how actually useful these features really are. But Apple is now officially in the generative AI game. Continuing today with Kling AI. Kling AI, it is a competitor or models produced by Kling AI compete with OpenAI's Sora. So text to video or prompt to video models. And I'll let the video do the talking here. So this is a video generated with Kling AI or with their models. And this is a child riding a bicycle on what seems to be an autumn evening. So it looks pretty good. Looks very impressive. I want to share the second example. Multiple examples are shown by Kling AI on their YouTube page. And here we have a cat barista. So this is for all the cat lovers. And again, the video is looking really good. Now, compared to Sora, I wouldn't put the quality quite up there, but this is not really what they're going for. What they're really trying to showcase here is the length of videos that this model can produce. So what we're seeing with text to video models is videos are usually really short, only a few seconds, five, six seconds. In this case, the first video is over a minute long. It's actually one minute and 30 seconds long. And the second video is also longer. So this is pushing the boundaries of this technology. Something similar is happening to video length as it's happening to input context window size, right? So it's increasing and the quality is increasing as well. So I think this is a trend that we can continue in the future where well, videos will be longer and longer. And staying on the topic of AI video generation, it's not just for research, it's not just showing off the capabilities. The 2024 Tribeca Festival will feature Sora Shorts, five short films created using OpenAI's text-to-video model Sora will be screened during this year's festival. So this is very interesting to see and what will be even more interesting to see, what is the reception like? Because there has been some pushback, especially from artists who, who in a way feel threatened by this technology. But this is interesting to see, this is how the field is moving forward. Next one, Unitree Robotics. So a few weeks ago, we featured a humanoid robot from Boston Dynamics. Now, 
Today, I want to talk about the G1 humanoid robot from Unitree. And why this one is interesting, because it's actually available for purchase. And there's a price tag on it of 16,000 US dollars. So let's look at the video showing some of the capabilities of the G1 humanoid robot. So the starting sequence, again, something out of the Exorcist. This, this I guess, is man mandatory for these humanoid robots. It can move, obviously. It can also run. And then it can be abused. You can take out your anger on this robot. And now I'm sure of one thing. You do not want to be this guy when machines take over. It can fold itself so it's more portable. It weighs 35 kilos. And it can wield a weapon. I'm not sure why we are teaching them this. But all the jokes aside, this is very impressive. And this is this this is really pushing the boundaries of robotics. Obviously, the robot can perform more useful tasks as well, such as some of the household tasks. It can open a bottle. And then it can also cook. How well it can cook is a different question. But still, very, very impressive to see from Unitree Robotics. Now, this is not really intended for household use. The robot is relatively short. It is under 130 centimeters. This is aimed at research platforms, research labs, so that they can continue developing AI models running, let's say, within these robots or really power, powering these robots, enabling these robots to perform useful tasks. And looking at the assistance that are now coming to devices and looking at some of the capabilities of humanoid robots, I think we can all see where the future is going, where these capabilities will be within these models and we'll be able, or sorry, within these robots and we will be able to use them to, let's say, help us with cooking, help us with some of the household tasks, such as cleaning. And then the last one for today, it's from the CEO of Zoom. So let's see what Zoom is up to when it comes to generative AI. They are thinking about the technology called Digital Twin. So what you will be able to do is create your AI avatar. And this AI avatar will attend meetings on your behalf. So you'll be not, you won't be, you won't be attending meetings yourself. You will send your AI avatar. This AI avatar will actually be able to make decisions on your behalf, or this is the goal. This is the future we are going towards, says the CEO of Zoom. And this is very impressive, but let's see what Zoom can actually deliver in the near future. And this is it for this week. Thank you for being with us. A lot of very interesting, impressive announcements. Again, Apple's event is still going, so I think we can expect a few more coming from them. But until next time, until next week, thank you for being with us.